Hello and welcome to these Wednesday Reflections during the season of Lent. I'm here in a, a beautiful spot that Nancy and I often come to just experience the beauty of God's world. So you may hear some background noises, some boats crossing, whatever it might be, but I thought it would be fun to do this reflection today in this beautiful spot. We're looking at the Serenity Prayer. It was written by a theologian whose name is Reinhold Niebuhr in 1931-1932, and its fame rapidly spread throughout the world as many people embraced its wisdom, found an inward confidence and a deeper peace as they confronted the circumstances, difficult circumstances and challenges of life. It's a familiar prayer to many of us. It was picked up by Alcoholics Anonymous and then AA uh, wove it into the fabric of their recovery process as people moved out of addiction into the freedom of sobriety. But it's not limited to AA in any way. It's really a universal prayer of the heart of the soul. And so I want to look at the opening lines which are most familiar to us, but there's a longer prayer. It really is a longer prayer, and we'll look at that throughout the weeks of our reflections. But today, these words are certainly familiar to you. Let's listen to them again. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I want you to notice, first of all, that this is a prayer addressed to God. God, give to me the serenity that I need. Serenity is a gift. It's not something that we achieve, something we work up, or something that can be created by our own effort. We don't have the sufficiency to have the serenity of God. It's a gift. It's really his nature. He is the God of peace that passes all understanding. And so, we have to acknowledge, first of all, our need, maybe even our powerlessness. This higher power that we name God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come to him and we ask him to give us serenity. I like to think of serenity as inward confidence, the inward confidence that we have to take the circumstances and the afflictive emotions that we may be feeling and transform them with God's help into flourishing life, creating goodness, creating good for ourselves and for those we love. So serenity is a deep peace that comes from God, that begins to work from the inside out as we turn to him, as we ask for this grace. But there are three virtues in the opening lines that I want to focus on today. First is acceptance, Secondly is courage, and third is wisdom. God grant me the serenity to accept what I cannot change, acceptance. Acceptance. Acceptance is that willingness to step aside from the enmeshment and the over-attachment that we may have to events, to circumstances, to relationships, to roles that we live in to step aside from them and not be so over-identified with them, that we may find freedom from the affliction and the suffering that that often brings. When we are trying to control outcomes too tightly, too aggressively, we need to find acceptance. So we know we need to keep moving and we move perhaps to the first level of acceptance, which is a little healthier and that is tolerance. At least we are willing to accept, this is my life. This is here, cannot deny it, can't push it away, can't condemn it. So live and let live. And we move through these stages of acceptance every day. But we also long for more than simple tolerance. We know that's not healthy enough. And so we have to come to the place of true acceptance. But ultimately, true healing acceptance is a full embracing of what is. Can't change it. We don't need to change it as much as we need to embrace our present reality and to move forward in freedom 
to the creation of goodness in our lives. So acceptance is the first virtue, but it's that paradox that while there are things that we cannot change, at least directly, we pray, God, give me the courage to change the things that I can. So the second virtue is courage. And that's a heart word. Courage comes from the heart, from the inside out. Courage is to accept our agency and our responsibility to change things for the good. Do you know that God has given you agency? <laughs> that you're not living in a perplexing passivity. You're not withdrawn from life and withdrawn from reality, but you are given the courage to change things. Creative agency. God has given you an amount of determinative will, willingness. And from the will, empowered and enabled by spiritual grace, we can bring about healthy change, creation of good, transforming our circumstances, our emotions, and being able to create flourishing outcomes for ourselves and for those we love. So it's the courage to accept your agency. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And how much we need to be reminded that we have been given the ability to bring change but it takes courage. And then finally, the wisdom to know the difference between these two things, what we can change and what we can't. I like to think of wisdom as contemplative living, as prayerful living, as living your life in a prayerful conversation with God because we need his wisdom. The acknowledgement of God is the beginning of all wisdom. Christ is our wisdom, to have the mind of Christ, to be mindful and aware of the presence of God with me. God is with me and I am with God, the with God life of interactive agency. This kind of synergy that happens when we are aware and practicing the awareness of God. Psalm 16, 8 says, I have set the Lord before me always, therefore I shall not fall. I will not be shaken. I've set the Lord always before me. That is, I'm acknowledging his presence wherever I may be at all times, seeking to hold him before me, practicing mindful awareness of God's loving and gracious presence. And so, on this day in the beauty of God's creation, we are alive, my friends. And may we take this wonderful, powerful prayer, the serenity prayer, to guide our day and to guide our Lenten reflections, to find a deeper prayerful life, a more contemplative way of being aware of the beauty of life, the goodness of life, even though there are things that are afflictive and challenging and painful, not to ignore that, but to turn to God's serenity and inward confidence. God's peace be with you and his serenity be with you as well. See you next time.